Hi, Lee Ellis here with this month's installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, actually, I've been working very hard on a new book called Engage with Honor, Building a Culture of Courageous Accountability. It's been a lot of fun, but I'll tell you, it's really a lot of work when you're in the last month or two of a book trying to get it all nailed down and packaged together so it all fits together and the edits done and so on. A lot of work. But in there, we have been focusing a lot on honor and especially on its guardian companion, accountability. That's what we're calling it. The guardian companion is accountability. Well, you know, we live in the information age, and one of the things that it's done for us, aside from give us a lot of information that's good and some that we probably don't need and probably overwhelming us a lot of the time, but the information age has brought us a lot of uh, openness and shined a very bright light on corruption and scandals. So we're much more aware of them than we were in the past. We're just hearing about things going on in South America and a couple of countries there. China's got a whole army engaged in corruption and trying to wipe out corruption uh, from their government level. Uh, it's going on in Europe. Some of the banks we've read about in the last year, FIFA, the World Soccer Organization, corruption. We had several people indicted by the U.S. Attorney General. So it's everywhere. It's in our own country. It's next door. And the reality is the battle for honor and accountability is going on right here inside each one of us because we're humans. Those are all those other people. They didn't just wake up one day and say, I think I'll be corrupt. I'll be a crook. It's one of those things that sleeps that seeps in. It's already there. And unless we're guarding it and protecting it through accountability and other areas and commitment, I'll talk about that in a minute, then it can happen to any of us. In fact, recently, uh, I promised someone I'd have a proposal back to them in a couple of weeks. I was really loaded up, so I put it off a couple of weeks. Well, that was the same week that uh, so much has been going on to get this book. We were meeting a deadline to get the advanced read copies printed. I got behind. I didn't get my proposal done. So I had this thing going on in my head about how am I going to face this. So I finally had to realize I just had to let them know that I couldn't make that commitment. And that's really uh, Article 3 in our Code of Conduct is, you know, keep your commitments and keep your word. And when you can't, let someone know. And that's what I had to do. But, you know, we all face those battles, internal battles all the time. Think about this. When your character cannot be assumed, Character can never be assumed. It must be evidenced through our behaviors, and that comes through courage and commitment. Think about it when decisions are hard. Yeah? What about when vulnerability is required? What about when there's reliability needed or execution of responsibilities in difficult circumstances? What about fear of failure? When that creeps in, we want to cut a corner and look for an easy way out. What about dealing with ambiguity and uncertainty? And then when we have to do something and stand up for something that we know there's a high risk of that involved, that's when our character really comes to the test. Will we actually have the courage and the commitment to stand for what we believe in? You know, a friend of mine, Sam Silverstein, is a consultant also, and he focuses a lot on accountability. He speaks about it nationally. And Sam has a book out called Non-Negotiable. I read it, and I love the title, love the book. Think about non-negotiable. Do you have non-negotiables? Well, if you really want to be guarding your character, you really do need to have those non-negotiables. That's what our honor code that we mentioned uh, recently and again today, the honor code is seven of those articles that have to do with character. So we recommend that if you don't already have something. But you need to have your own version of non-negotiables because if you don't, you don't have clarity that you need to make those hard decisions. Think about this. Character, courage, and commitment. They all go together. We call that in the book in chapter four, those four are the core of accountability. Character, courage, and commitment. You can't have character without courage. You can't have character without commitment. You can't have character without having some sort of list of non-negotiables that you're working on. Now, the reality is nobody can live up to their own standards even, let alone somebody else's standards. And if you have high standards, it's even tougher. So that's why it's so hard. That's why you need to be coaching yourself. You need that at the forefront of your mind, holding yourself accountable to character, courage, and commitment so that you can be an honorable person.
You see, when you're accountable and when you're honorable, it opens doors for you. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it opens doors. Secondly, it keeps those doors open for you for the future because people are looking for someone they can trust. They're looking for someone who's authentic. Now, you have to perform, but if you can be trustworthy and authentic, that really is a big attraction for others. And finally, honor and accountability keep certain doors closed because you've got non-negotiables. And when doors are closed, that's a good thing to protect you as you walk through life, as you go through your business, at your home situation, wherever you are, knowing what your non-negotiables are and holding yourself accountable through character, courage, and commitment is so powerful to help you be the person you want to be, the person you're committed to be, the person you want others to think you are. And all of that will help you avoid the front pages of the media or the radio broadcasts or the TV of corruption and dishonorable behavior. Or maybe they're not the, the things are not that big. Maybe it's just that daily battle to be the person that you really want to be for your family, for your company, for your friends. Well, I hope that you'll join me in this battle. It's not easy. I can tell you that. I'm in that battle every day. I hope you'll join me. And, you know, we'd love to hear some stories from you. I've tried to be authentic and tell you my situation. We started battling this in the POW camps. I've mentioned that in previous um, coaching sessions here, that how we had to battle and face the enemy to live up to our commitments, to our code of conduct, to our country, and to our teammates, and to return with honor. We'd love to have your struggles with living with honor. So please join us on Facebook or LinkedIn, wherever you see us at Twitter, and let us know what your struggles are and how you're fighting that battle with us to live with honor, to engage with honor, and to be accountable. Until next month, I wish you all the best.